It's now time for the sponsor perspective of our program. I'd like to introduce Dr. David Huen, a director of the Antibiotic Resistant Project at the Pew Charitable Trust. He's joined in conversation by Jason Jedlinski, publisher and general manager of The Hill. Dr. David Huen, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, wanted to ask you, can you help us understand the threat of antibiotic resistance? What are the real world implications for the average person? Sure. Um, the inability to treat bacterial infections because these bacteria develop resistance to antibiotics we have available on hand really poses a threat to every aspect of modern medicine. Uh, CDC already estimates that about 35,000 35,000 people die each year in the United States from antibiotic resistant infections. And another study, recent study has shown that about 1.3 million people a year worldwide are dying from of resistant infections. And that number is higher than um, HIV or malaria um, globally. So it's already happening. And the concern here is that if the, if the issue of antibiotic resistance goes unchecked, um, we may be seeing a future where some of the most simple, the most simple, simple and common infections um, is no longer treatable and or there may be a significant difficulties treating it. And that carries enormous implications for the entire, entire how we deliver healthcare. Um, bacterial infections happen as a complications for many of the therapies and procedures that um, our healthcare system provides, including chemotherapy or elective surgeries um, such as hip replacement. And if we don't have effective antibiotics on hand, if these antibiotics are no longer able to treat these infections, then we are really undermining all the successes and advances that we have seen across um, the healthcare setting. Well, it makes sense in that context why it's described as a public health threat then. Absolutely. It is a public health emergency um, and that, needs to be, uh, that needs to be addressed. And it's very much all interconnected with um, not just every aspect of healthcare, but a lot of the different aspects of public health as we are learning from the COVID-19 experience. Yeah, the last two years have been characterized by this global pandemic. Tell us what impact that's had on antibiotic resistance. We have seen increased, significant increases in the amount of antibiotic resistant infections among patients who have been hospitalized during the pandemic. The CDC published a report last fall that showed in 2020, those numbers have gone up for some of these uh, really resistant infections, including MRSA, which is the most um, well-known of all the different super, so-called superbugs. And the, the, this really illustrates the point of um, why having effective antibiotics is so important when it comes to pandemic preparedness. In the case of COVID-19, most of these patients are in the hospital for long periods of time. They're typically ventilated or on a ventilator for long periods of time. Um, and there be, there's a lot of medical devices and instrumentation being used and all of that puts the patient at risk for developing bacterial infections. So it's really important for us to be able to treat those infections when they happen. And that's where having effective antibiotics is so crucial and why it really illustrates the point of that having these antibiotics available and effective to us is part of a comprehensive and complete pandemic preparedness plan. You mentioned effective antibiotics. I think some viewers may wonder if this is so serious and such an emergency, why not just develop new antibiotics? Why not replace what's becoming less effective with new treatments? No, that's a great question. And it's a very complex answer as you're gonna be hearing during this event, um, the different aspects of this issue. But the bottom line is Developing new antibiotics and making them available to patients for treatment is a very resource intensive and a time consuming process. An average antibiotic takes about 10 to 15 years before, from the time of discovery all the way through its approval and coming onto the market. And it takes about $1.3 billion on, on average for each antibiotic. The problem is that the return on investment once those antibiotics hit those markets is just not there. And the, most of the time cannot recuperate, recoup the amount of investments that we just talked about. So for example, we have seen in the last decade, uh, several antibiotic pharmaceutical companies go under, even after successfully um, getting a new antibiotic approved by FDA because of these challenges where we have a essentially a broken market system um, that 
does not, uh, that makes it difficult for um, new antibiotics to be sustained and made of accessible um, for patients. Yeah, it sounds like the incentive simply isn't there um, to address this emergency. Uh, can you tell us what is Pew Charitable Trust doing about this issue? Well, the Pew Charitable Trust, we're uh, attacking this from two fronts. The first is around antibiotic stewardship. Um, we are doing, we are advocating for policies and research to really try to find ways to de- spur the adoption of antibiotic stewardship activities across all healthcare settings. And when we say antibiotic stewardship activities, these are policies and um, actions and interventions that can be taken to really minimize and reduce the amount of inappropriate or unnecessary antibiotics that are being given, while at the same time making sure those patients who truly need an antibiotic gets it gets the optimal um, regimen as possible. So that's one area that we're focusing on. The second area is essentially the second half of the same coin is why we're buying time with being judicious of with our antibiotic use um, to make sure we preserve the effectiveness of the antibiotics that we have on hand. We also need to really reinvigorate the antibiotic pipeline. The pipeline has really dried up um, and it's still not where it needs to be in terms of trying to keep pace with the, emer- the speed and spread of the emergence of these antibiotic resistant bacteria. And this is where we really need to focus the zero in on how do we provide economic incentive policies to spur the development of, these, uh, of new antibiotics. And this is where the Pasteur Act comes in. The Pasteur Act uh, addresses both fronts. It really do- it, it helps with the Um, helps with antibiotic stewardship programs by dedicating resources for hospitals, especially those in the resource limited settings. But more importantly, it addresses the broken market issue by delinking the value of antibiotic as a medication, not delinking that away from the volume of sales and actually assigning a public health value to it and creating a more predictable and sustainable um, revenue for those um, for those researchers and pharmaceutical companies that have invested um, in the development of those new antibiotics. We've all heard as patients that we should not be seeking uh, penicillins for a common cold, et cetera. What else can viewers of, of this event, this program today do uh, to help advance action on this? Well, you, I think you, you hit it right. You know, you, you, that's exactly it, what you said in terms of trying to make sure that when you as a patient go see your doctor, have an open conversation when, if an antibiotic use is being discussed as a potential option. It's very imp- important for you as a patient to have an informed uh, understand, understanding and be part of the decision-making process because we know from a um, series of studies that have shown that the patient expectations and the patient um, sometimes pressure uh, plays a significant role in, the, in your providers and your physicians uh, t- decision-making process when it comes to antibiotics. So we really encourage patients to have that open conversation because, and have a good understanding of what the pros and cons are because antibiotics do have side effects associated with it that, that the patients and sometimes even doctors may not fully appreciate the extent of it. And that's why it's really um, good to know uh, going in that some of these conditions such as viral infections, including COVID um, or bronchitis, um, and many of these infections do not need an antibiotic. The antibiotics don't help. So um, we, we strongly encourage to have those discussions out in the open during your doctor's visit. Yeah. Lean on the physician's expertise. Always good advice. Well, uh, Dr. David Yun, Director of the Antibiotic Resistance Project for the Pew Charitable Trust, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your support of today's program. Thank you for having me.